Dissociative identity disorder is when an individual develops alternate personalities that function with or without the awareness of the person's usual self. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, also known as DSM-5, identifies it as an identity disruption indicated by the presence of two or more distinct personality states. DID is one of a group of conditions called dissociative disorders. Dissociative disorders are mental illnesses that involve disruptions or breakdowns of behavior, consciousness, memory and perception, cognition or sensory motor functioning, which would otherwise function normally. When one or more of these functions is disrupted, dissociative symptoms can result. These symptoms can be mild, but they can also be severe to a point where they interfere with a person's general functioning both in personal life and at work. Dissociative disorders are actually among the oldest reported psychiatric disorders with case reports appearing at the end of the 18th century and extensive descriptions in the medical literature of the 19th century. Some common symptoms of DID include, but not limited to, the inability to remember large parts of childhood, unexplained events like finding yourself somewhere you don't remember walking to, hallucinations, out-of-body experiences, difference in handwriting, and some symptoms of DID can be attributed to a person's cultural background where possessions may be a part of cultural beliefs. DID may often then form as spirits, demons, or animals, and this is also how DID may go undiagnosed and untreated. People of all ages and all racial, ethical, socioeconomic backgrounds can experience DID. However, women are much more likely to be diagnosed. Beginning in the 1980s, researchers on dissociation and dissociative disorders developed a number of reliable self-report inventories and diagnostic interviews to assess dissociation in children, adolescents, and adults. In these studies, higher dissociation scores and a dissociative disorder diagnosis were strongly linked to those with acute or chronic traumatic experiences. Studies have included victims of childhood maltreatment and neglect, adult rape, prisoner of war experiences, torture, trafficking, repeated painful medical procedures, accidents, and natural disasters. However, people who have experienced physical and sexual abuse in childhood are at increased risk of dissociative identity disorder. The vast majority of people who develop dissociative disorders have experienced repetitive, overwhelming trauma in childhood. Genetic studies of dissociation also suggest that there is a complex interplay between genetic factors in type, timing, and chronicity of trauma. Up to now, the precise neurobiological underpinnings of dissociation remain elusive, but a growing number of neuroimaging studies have found altered brain structure and function for those with DD. Studies that investigated functional alterations found that DID patients showed elevated cardiovascular responses like heart rate and blood pressure, and stronger amygdala and insulin activity that are responsible for emotional processing, memory, attention, and, and introspective awareness. In another study, DID patients exhibited decreased blood flow in the thalamus during altered state, which is responsible for the filtering of sensory input. In terms of structural alterations, one study found that individuals with DID had reduced volumes in the amygdala and hippocampus. The hippocampus is responsible for learning and memory. Smaller volumes may be related to early life trauma as the hippocampus is sensitive to heightened stress and therefore leading to potential cell damage in the area. Usually the goals of treatment for DID are to relieve symptoms, ensure the safety of the individual and those around him or her, and more importantly, to reconnect the different personalities into one integrated, well-functioning identity. However, the best treatment approach will depend on the individual. Although there are multiple treatment methods, the most common treatments include a combination of psychotherapy, cognitive brain therapy, medication, family or group therapy, meditation and relaxation techniques, and creative therapies. People with DID generally respond well to treatment, but realistically, treatment can be a long and painstaking process. To improve a person's outlook, it is important to treat any other problems or complications such as depression, anxiety, or substance abuse before. Some simple things friends and family can help are to be patient and understanding, think about methods and ways to handle identity switches when they arise, and learn how to recognize and avoid triggers. And lastly, help them find the right support and take care of yourself.